Hey my friend, welcome back to your minimalist intensive journey. This is a seven part series, all of which is available over on my membership site, rewildestlife.com, which I would love to have you be part of. Check it out with the link in my bio. We're posting the first three segments right here on my YouTube channel for free. So if you're watching over on my YouTube channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. The last two segments we've talked about setting intentions for your minimalist journey and physically decluttering your space so that you can make room for the things you truly love. That's really the main goal of minimalism. It's not so much about how few things we can own as much as it is about do we love what we own and does it bring us joy? Does it bring us a sense of peace? That's really what we're looking for, isn't it, in so many ways. Today we're talking about emotionally decluttering. So this goes a little bit deeper. This is touching on the spiritual aspects of how we can use minimalism as a mindset and a spiritual tool to help us grow. Are our mindsets and beliefs limiting us? Do we hold limiting beliefs that are affecting our everyday life, keeping us tied down or held back from doing the things we really would love to do? Oftentimes we develop fears and anxieties about doing certain things or stepping outside of our comfort zone and we hold tightly to these beliefs, sometimes without even knowing it. Emotional decluttering takes a lot of energetic space. And so rather than focusing on emotionally decluttering itself, like how can I dig through myself and find the things that are negative and like purge those things out of my life, I would like you to not focus so much on how to get rid of those things in your life as much as I'd like you to focus on how can you create energetic space to release anything that needs to be released and receive anything that is waiting for you to receive it, okay? So just let that idea sit with you for a minute. How can you create energetic space to let go of anything that's ready for you to let go of it and so that you can receive with open arms anything that is waiting for you to receive it. Oftentimes, we're so busy with other things and there's so much noise around us that we can't see so many good things in our lives that are actually waiting for us to embrace them, waiting for us to fully integrate and savor them, to make them our own. So I'm going to suggest a few practices that have helped me personally in my journey. And it doesn't begin and end with these. This is just a jumping off point of things that have helped me. So please comment below and let me know if you have some additional ideas or things you've tried that have worked for you. I would love to hear about them. I'm going to pull these different methods from my book, The More and the Less, which you can find with the link in my bio. Or if you're in the Rewildest platform, that ebook will already be available to you. But this book chronicles my minimalist journey and I recommend quite a few spiritual practices and tools that have helped me. So that's what I'm gonna be pulling from here. Meditation is a wonderful way to create that energetic space within yourself to discover what those things are that you need to let go of or that you need to receive or both. I have lots of meditations available here on YouTube and within my membership platform, Rewildest Life. And there's tons of other meditations available all over the internet. And you don't even need to follow a guided meditation. You can just sit quietly outside or maybe in a park or on the beach or just on your bed first thing in the morning or before you go to sleep and just sit with yourself and allow yourself to become accustomed to this idea that we can release our thoughts and become the observer. That in and of itself is a life's 
worth of practice and goodness, but I've gained so much insight and so much, it's just changed my whole internal landscape to meditate. And um, it's something that if you're not, if you, you're someone who's never meditated, maybe you're like, oh, okay, come on, Kate, get to the next thing. Like, I invite you to just try it, a five minute meditation. And just see what a five minute meditation every day can do for your mental landscape in terms of calming your mind and tapping into that parasitic, parasympathetic nervous system where you can truly just drop in, rest, relax, let all the thoughts and worries go. And it's a practice. Next is a regular yoga practice. I offer yoga as well as a certified yoga teacher. And the reason that I went through yoga teacher training <laughs> when was inspired to even go on that journey was because of how much yoga has changed my life. Yoga has changed my life so much. And there's so many different varieties of yoga. It's like really accessible to all in so many different formats from yoga nidra to different types of breath work to the actual asana practices. Find a yoga practice that works for you because it's all about tapping into that mind, body, spirit, breath connection and becoming aware of your body's energy field. And the more you become aware of what you feel like energetically, the more you can align everything else in your life with that, with that holistic, intrinsic instinct of what is actually good for you, what is actually guiding you towards what you want to manifest in your life. So I highly recommend trying yoga practice, either some of the ones I offer here on my channel or on my platform or Wildest Life or anything. Just roll out a mat and see what happens. Forest bathing and grounding or earthing. Getting out into nature, walking aimlessly in nature, not hiking, just aimlessly enjoying nature. Even if it's just sitting on your porch and soaking in the sounds of the birds and the wind and the leaves, or just breathing the fresh air, noticing the outdoor space, do whatever you can to just immerse yourself in nature. Walk barefoot on the ground, connect with Mother Earth, feel the energy of the earth and how it corresponds with your body. There's so much science behind this, it's, it's amazing and I don't know anywhere near as much as I'd like to, but I'm learning. And as we connect more with the earth, we connect more with our wild selves. And I truly believe that and I've felt that. And the more we connect with who we really are in a wild, primal basis, the more we can let go of all this other crap that just gathers around us, including negative mindsets and concepts that hold us back. Breath work. Breath work is something that ties in really well with yoga and meditation, so you can tag that into your practice or you can practice breath work on its own. It's remarkable how when we tap into the power of our breath, it really is just that a power, the prana moving through our bodies. It's all tied into the breath. And it's, it's amazing how much our mindsets can shift just from tapping into that power. And I would love for you to look at it that way, as a power that can help you shift emotionally can help you create that energetic space where you can see more clearly the things you need to let go of. And lastly, sound healing and sound baths. I only just recently went to my first ever in-person sound healing sessions and I was blown away <laughs> by how transformative they were. I mean, I was laying on the floor on a yoga mat in this um, communal space, listening to the sound bath that everyone around me was immersed in as well. And I was just, tears were pouring down my face. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Like as they're playing like the crystal bowls and these different instruments taking you literally through this journey, I was going on this internal journey that felt so intense, it moved me to tears. And so many emotions that I needed to process came up and were processed 
and I was able to let them go and I was able to leave them behind and this sound healing acted as the vehicle to facilitate that, to facilitate that release. So if that's something that you've thought about before or maybe you've never thought about it, but I'd recommend it, look into it. Even if you just try some stuff on YouTube, there's lots of sound healers on YouTube that offer so many beautiful sound healing sessions and sound baths. It, sound is fundamentally something that helps us to transform. It helps us to step forward into the unknown. It helps us to shift and humanity has always been tied to music in this really important spiritual kind of way. So see if that's something that you want to incorporate into your practice. So to recap some of the tools that I would recommend trying to create energetic space, to invite and let go of anything that's no longer serving you, meditation, a regular yoga practice, for forest bathing, or a grounding, earthing practice, breath work, and sound healing. Of course, there's many, many, many more things you can do. This is just, like I said, a jumping off point. Use this as a springboard. Comment below and tell me what are some things that have helped you in your emotional decluttering journey? What is something that you want to invite into your life? Maybe a new mindset or a mantra or something you want to manifest in your life? Comment below and share it. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Again, I'm drawing from my book, The More and the Less. And if you'd like to check it out, it would mean a lot to me. The link is below. All the proceeds go so much to supporting what I do here. So it means a lot to me. And I, I think you'll enjoy it if you like this sort of thing. You're obviously here because you, you are on your own minimalist journey. I couldn't be more excited for you. If you'd like to check out Rewildest Life and join the platform so that you can get the full seven part series of this minimalism intensive, I invite you to do so with the link below. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope it has served you and I wish you so much joy as you move forward. Namaste, my friend. Hey friend, I just wanted to let you know if you enjoyed the past three installments of this Minimalism Intensive, I invite you to join Rewildest Life and receive the next installments. We're going seven parts on this series here and we're going to be delving into creating space in your life and valuing your space so that you can really create and curate a life that you love, that sparks joy in your heart. We're going to be talking about framework for inviting and letting go. Digital minimalism, a complete crash course. And when minimalism becomes toxic, pitfalls to avoid. So if you've been enjoying this series here on my YouTube channel, please check out Rewildest Life. I would love to have you in the community. And I think you're going to get a lot of the upcoming installments of this minimalism intensive. I hope to see you over there. And I wish you so much joy in your journey. Namaste.